What is up you guys, this is all Day one on the PS4 and I'm going to be giving you an Anthem video and with this video I'm going to be giving you just basically like a, the basic guide on what you should know and how to pretty much play and just all the basic stuff. So this is only based off of the demo so obviously when the real game does drop we're going to have a lot more stuff and when it does drop I will be talking about more things and having more guides for that. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Alright, so first things first is we're going to go over the loadout. So you have weapons, assault systems, components, strike system, and support system. So the thing is, a lot of these have multiple different options inside of them, such as the components and the weapons. But the assault system, strike system, and support system have their own thing. And those are basically your abilities. Now with the weapons, you can equip up to two weapons, a secondary and a primary. And then you can also have an assault rifle a marksman rifle which is kind of like a scout rifle in destiny you can have a sniper you can have a shotgun pistol or heavy pistol a machine gun pistol and you can craft these weapons as well now with crafting it is you have to have unlocked the weapon before so such as you have to have equipped it and then dismantled it once you dismantle it you'll generally have you'll be able to have this item unlocked and it's it's a pretty nice feature for some reason like I'm able to craft it and then at some other points I'm not able to craft it but either way I think it's a really nice feature to have with the uh, with crafting and the weapons because instead of having to go farm for blueprints and whatnot or getting min maxed weapons I think it's it's a nice feature and then for your assault system your assault system is basically going to be like your grenade or your what is it called your your DPS or damage dealing weapon or ability and now for the support system the support system is more of a buff like a team buff type of deal or you can also use it to wipe off certain status effects such as the rally cry that I have for the interceptor it wipes off all status effects on you and your nearby allies and then for the strike system strike system is just like the assault where it does damage but with the some of some of the strike systems and some of the assault systems do have impact that they can do or they can deal impact or combos some of them cannot and then for the components you have a lot of different components but in the demo you're only going to be able to unlock up to two but with the components it basically it's like having passives or i guess armor for yourself and the reason why i say it's like passives is because you get increase in javelin health and javelin armor and then you also get all these different i guess mods or just different stats that you can add on as well which is really nice and eventually you'll be able to craft these not right now in the demo it is locked out but you'll be able to craft these and the way you can craft your items your components your weapons and all those is you need to actually go and get the materials either in the open world or in certain missions you can just get the you can get the materials and you also have to break down the items as well if you want to be able to create specific mods and, or not mods but components and whatnot and now for this one you're going to or for the styles you have a bunch of different styles that you can get for your javelin and i'm assuming when the full game does release we're gonna have much more than just one epic um, unlockable but maybe we won't and maybe the rest of the items would be unlocked inside of the game but with the uh, items you can unlock in the styles it'll only cost you 25 coins in the demo with because they they said that in the demo it's only going to cost 25 25 coins which means when the actual full game releases it's going to cost a little bit more than just 25 possibly like 50 or 100 and then you have vinyls and then or vinyls and with these it's basically like armor or skin paints so these are these are pretty nice i wish you could you know just customize the color on them the color scheme but these are pretty nice little war paints i guess and then for this one you can also choose whether you want your armor to look old and beat up or new clean and with the clean it still looks like it's been worn out but it's just clean i like using new on mine and then you have all these different po um, these animations and whatnot for your just if you want to use emotes and with the emotes all you have to do is just press down on the d-pad whenever you're in the game and then you'll use whatever emote is available and then if you press right or left on the d-pad if you want to switch emotes so i think it's pretty nice to just switch between them all 
So up next is going to be the consumables. And with the consumables, you're going to be able to equip certain consumables that you can either craft or find. And the way you find your consumables is you have to go to your javelin. And then once you go to your javelin, you're going to see summary squad consumables. You just go all the way to the right side and then you'll be able to get there. Now with consumables, you have three different slots, each slot being uh, unlocked at certain levels. So level 10, level 20, and level 30. And for myself, I'm assuming you can equip multiple of the same uh, consumable. And with each consumable, each consumable is basically going to be very useful for certain javelins and certain type of builds that you're going to go with. For example, if you're going to go with the interceptor, you're going to want to either go with something that gives you increase in melee damage or the ultimate damage or the cooldown because or generally the ultimate damage isn't going to really matter if you're using melee because the cooldown I mean the ultimate and the melee are basically the same so melee damage and cooldown would be the two things you generally want to go for and the other things is like maybe you want to use you want to have a certain amount of resistance against a certain enemy type going into a certain mission so each different enemy will have some type of different element that they can afflict on you so having knowing what you're going to go against it'll be useful to have these different um, I guess different consumables on or different resistances for example the bugs they will have acid they will primarily be acid and being a being resistant to acid is going to be very useful and then you can also stack up each different consumable as well so you can have instead of just 10 percent from the green consumable if you end up getting all three if you're level 30 you'll have up to 30 percent melee damage instead of 10 percent next one is going to be your vault so the vault isn't like how destiny's vault works or really any type of bank because your vault is going to be on you the whole time but the way the vault works is you just go into the vault and you can see all the different weapons and different components gears consumables and crafting items you have and because when you go into your javelin you won't be able to see all the different weapons you have you won't be able to see all the different items because some items are specific to certain and are certain javelins for example the weapons you can only use the grenade launcher on the colossus but for the other javelins you can only use pistols on anything else except for the colossus and you can also see all your available consumables all the available resources that you have as well so i think it's pretty neat you don't necessarily need a bank because you have up to 300 inventory slots as well or storage slots so next we're going to go over the ultimate. So the ultimate, you're going to have to press up on your d-pad if you want to use your ultimate. But the other thing is you also have a timer. Depends on the javelin you're using. For example, the interceptor is going to have the timer on the right and the left side where the yellow bar is going down. You have to make sure that does not go... Or you you got to make sure you get out of the combat pretty much. If, you're, if you jump into the middle of hordes of enemies, you want to make sure you're out of there so make sure you're paying attention to that because there's going to be a few times where I didn't look at it and I ended up getting one-shotted by the boss because of after that. And another nice thing about the uh, about the um, ultimate is it keeps you invulnerable to all damage and you also get full health as well. So if you're really low on health and there's just a bunch of enemies in the way, you can just press that and then you'll get full health back. So up next is going to be uh, the status effects and combo bonuses that you can get. So the combo bonuses, as you can see, the Aura Ice and the left side, Acid and Webbed, those two are not bonuses, but the Aura Ice basically happens whenever you melee an enemy that is iced and you get a combo for that. When it does that, you basically have like iced weapons. And then the Acid and the Webbed, those are going to be negative effects on you. So acid is going to do slight damage over time, but I'm going to assume that it also lets you take more damage as well because it doesn't do a lot of damage in comparison to something like fire, where fire is going to do a massive amount of damage to you. And if you want to take mass, uh, if you want to take the fire status effects off of you, just go find some water, and you'll be able to take that off. Now, if you're if you're playing an interceptor, you can just use L1 R1. If you're, you, if you're using Rally Cry, Rally Cry will wipe off any status effects on you. And then for Ice, Ice is going to either freeze you or it's going to slow you down. I don't think it will freeze you, but I know it will slow you down. And then Lightning is just going to drop your shield a lot quicker. So 
So the last thing we're going to be talking about is going to be your rewards, medals, and feats that you end up getting or completing for doing either free play or from doing the expeditions or other missions and whatnot. So you'll get a lot of XP depending on how much medals you end up earning. And there's different medal types you can get a bronze, silver, and gold medal. Gold medals would give you a lot more XP as well, so if you can end up getting gold medals in your missions or in free play, I'm going to assume you're going to be leveling up a lot faster, so going from levels 1 to 30 shouldn't take too long. But now, you also end up getting different medals. I'm not exactly sure what the Soldier and Executioner medals are for or what they really mean, but I don't think there's a bonus to them. It's just a title. And then you have all this extra loot that you can end up getting. So what's really nice about the loot system as well is if you get disconnected, you can still keep some of the loot. I don't think you keep all of them, but you do keep some of the loot that you've already earned in game in that mission. And also what's really nice about getting disconnected is, I mean it's not nice getting disconnected, but what's nice is you can always jump right back to the same squad you were just with. But that's pretty much it with this video. If this helped you out, go ahead and leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know down in the comment section. This is all day, day one on the PS4. Have a good day, good night, and peace.